Hey guys, Coach Adam talking to you today, and today I'm bringing you something new. This is Coach Adam's Bikini TV, where we'll be talking about all things bikini, show reviews, topics that are happening in the sport, maybe gossip here and there. But I appreciate you guys watching the very first one. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe. There's going to be a whole bunch of bikini news coming your way. Hey guys, Coach Adam talking to you today, and today I'm bringing you a very requested video about the bikini division. I have been posting some things about the evolution of bikini lately and how the bikini division has gotten really muscular. And so today, we're going to go down a timeline, we're going to go down some history and look at how the bikini division has evolved. Has it evolved for the best? Did it go too far? It was it better a few years ago? Let's take a look. So first off, I think it's important to get a guideline of what are we actually looking for in bikini? What is the actual criteria read? And how should we be preparing for the show? How should the judges be judging the athletes that are competing and showing up? Have they gotten away from the criteria? So here it is. So the bikini athletes should display a foundation of muscle which gives shape to the female body. Two, a full round glutes with a slight separation between the hamstring and glute area. Three, small amount of roundness in the delts. Four, conditioned core, overall look, hair, makeup, suit, tan, all that. Here's some things that bikini athletes should not display. So this is kind of setting the line of if you have this, it's not the criteria. Muscular density seen in figure physique. Squared glutes. Muscle separation seen in figure competitors. Graininess to the muscle. Striations anywhere. It doesn't say specifically uh, like in the shoulders or anything. It says anywhere at all is what it says. Okay, so now we got a guideline for what bikini should be. Now, are the judges sticking to it? So let's go ahead and take a look back at earlier champions and see where exactly they were, what they looked like, and how it is, has evolved to here. And is it actually being the criteria? Is it actually being stuck to? So first off, we're going to go into the original Miss Bikini Olympia, Nicole Negrani. I actually loved her physique, really amazing physique. The things I liked a lot about her physique is she's got a crazy small core. She's got good development to her quads, and, and she's hitting that old-school posing. I actually really liked that pose from back in the day. Um, it, I actually like it better because it shows the waist. So it really actually shows the front of the waist. It shows how wide someone is or how wide someone isn't. It's evolved quite a bit since then, but I like this a lot. It's kind of like the front and back pose from for bodybuilding type of thing where it really there's nowhere to hide anything, right? Um, so crazy small waist, but you can see not overly conditioned, not too much muscle density. Um, there's, you know, good development in the legs. Not, you know, you saw her at the beach. This is exactly what you'd see. You'd see her walking by at the beach and you'd be like, whoa, that girl's really fit. But you wouldn't say, whoa, that girl must be a bodybuilder. You'd say, that girl's really fit. She looks like a fitness model. And that's what the division was originally created for. I thought she was a perfect example of that. Things have changed a little bit. You know, her hair is on her shoulders. We wouldn't do that these days. We do want to see the shoulders development. Um, if you look at the glutes, they're a little bit softer than what you'd see today. You see the, 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 the bikini suit is a little bit wider than it is now as well. There's still a little bit of body fat on the glutes and on the hamstrings, um, but nothing crazy, you know, just still really tight, but not figure or woman's physique type, type of conditioning. So moving on down the road, you have Natalia Mello, and actually when Natalia Mello won, it was a pretty big step up in the muscle on the second year of bikini. You know, the things that you're not seeing is you're not seeing overly developed shoulders. You're not seeing like the crazy roundness of the shoulders. You're still seeing really good development in the glutes. And honestly, if she was posing how we would pose these days, her tie-ins would probably be pretty close to a lot of the girls, maybe not winning the Olympia stages, but a lot of the girls may be doing um, a lot of pros, I would say. You know, so good roundness to the hamstring. But then what happened this year um, is that they said, wow, that's, that's becoming kind of a lot already in 2012. We've really gotten those glutes developed. We've really gotten those legs developed. There's a little bit of density there. There's a tiny bit even of separation. Um, the, the cores got really tight. And so they said, you know what? Uh, I think we need to make sure we're sticking to the criteria and we are going to um, pick a different champion the next year, and then boom, who enters the house? Boom, Ashley Kotwasser winning 2013, 2014, and 2015 with slight evolutions to her physique on each year. Now you can see if you look at 2015 and you look at her core, it's a little bit more developed than it was in 2013. If you look at her um, muscular musculature in her legs, it's about the same all the way through, but she's a little bit tighter in 2015. Now, when we look at her overall back pose, 
on her on her glutes. Things changed a tiny bit. She pretty much kept it to the criteria the whole time. Um, you, you're looking at her legs. Nice roundness to her hamstring, but no separation and no detail. That's a key factor. No separation in the hamstrings. Even when she got a little bit tighter, there was still no separation in the hamstrings. When we look at her glutes on in all the years, you can see here, there's just a tiny bit of softness to the glutes. Nothing crazy, just a little bit. You know, this is what we call, you know, bikini fit, fitness model amount of body fat. We're not going over the top getting to that figure level of body fat. And this is what the criteria says the division should be. If she showed up now in 2022 with her glutes being this soft, they would say you need to be way tighter. They wouldn't even say you need to be tighter. They'd say you need to be way tighter. So that's where things have kind of changed. Now, if you look at her tines, and this is one of the more important things, I think, to, to talk about in bikini. If you look at her tines, you'll see a little bit of the tine. You'll see the shape of the tie in here but you're not seeing a full tie-in. And that's what been one of the bigger differences in bikini from a few years ago till now. And you're going to see it right in your face, and you'll be like, wow, that really did actually change. So this is what I would call a tie-in shape. And that's, what I think, bikini, where, where it kind of says in the description, tie-in shape should be. So tie-in shape, I absolutely agree. I think tie-in shape should be there. I think the girls should be very conditioned. I think that um, that the amount of muscle that was here in in 2013, 14, 15, and even in the next few years is actually really good. So next came out was Courtney King. Okay, now Courtney King had a totally different physique than Ashley. She was a little bit smaller, not necessarily in muscle, but just more petite than Ashley. Just a tiny bit of a smaller frame, really great flow, tiny waistline, um, great overall physique. A little bit smaller in the glutes, but remember, she's a more petite person, but she had the, the shoulders that had the width, she had the tiny core, but nothing was overly conditioned. And when I see Courtney King and I see Ashley, I can see them, you know, walking down the beach. Obviously, everyone's looking at them because they're like, man, those girls are really fit, but they're not looking at them and saying, hey, that girl must be a bodybuilder. I bet you she does figure competitions or something like that. You know? so, and that's what bikini is originally designed for. So as it is described, bikini is designed as you basically are someone who works out, you enjoy working out, and you decided to do a competition, so you decided to start dieting for the competition for maybe eight, maybe 16 weeks, and you basically look like you just woke up that day, like you weren't dieting super, super hard for the show. You look like you woke up that day, you just happen to be doing a fitness model photo shoot on the beach, something along those lines, but nowhere near of a bodybuilding physique, nowhere near those lines, okay? And that's where I think people have kind of forgotten is that this is how the sport was designed. Originally, bikini was designed, it came from the model competitions that were happening at the Olympia shows. So just a little bit of history, they used to have this thing called the Flex Model Search. And the Flex Model Search used to be one of the bigger things that would happen at, at these shows. It would be all guys and all girls. And one day, the people, the, the judges and the people at the NPC, IFBB, they said, man, these guys are, there's more of them showing up than there is in bodybuilders showing up to our shows. So why don't we create a division for these people to compete? And there, then Bikini was born a couple years later, Men's Physique and Women's Physique was born. And it was originally designed for the average gym goer who really wanted to push it for maybe a year and get into it. But it's not a, it's not designed to be a three-year, five-year physique before you get into your first show. I do agree. I think that a pro-level Miss Olympia bikini physique should be a three-year, five-year physique where it's getting a little bit better, but not pushing it so hard where even getting on stage your first time, you're like, man, I don't, I'll never look like even that. So I think that there's been a little bit of a slip in terms of how far it's gone. But if you go back in the history and you look at how it was originally created and where they've had their resets, I think that uh, they, they are very aware that there needs to be some sort of a reset here, and they, they, it's getting a little bit away from the criteria. So I loved uh, Courtney King as a Bikini Olympia champion. I thought that she was great for it. I thought that she, a lot of people had the ability to look like Courtney King. They had the It wasn't an, a, a crazy, very few amount of people that could actually look like her. Um, and that's the thing is when you get to the – extremes that are winning pro shows now and there is a difference between the girls that are winning pro shows and the girls that are winning olympia and i'll go into that in a minute when you get into some of the extremes of the girls that are winning these pro shows very few people can actually look like them and very very few can look like them naturally I and mean, we're talking we're splitting percentages here at this point of how many girls can actually look like that naturally and that is 
not what the division was designed for. And I think that that's in, that in itself is where the problem lies. So let's go ahead and move on down the road. Next up, we have the lovely Angelica Tessera. I thought that she was not just a great physique, but also a great champion. Um, obviously, I think Ashley was the best, the best champion that ever, <laughs> that ever lived in, in Bikini Olympia, um, just as a representative of the sport and whatnot. But, but Angelica, I mean, you'd, that would be a hard argument to say that, that uh, she was second to her. She is just such a great champion and such a lovely person um, and really just did great for our sport and represented the sport great. So uh, hats off to you, Angelica, for that. Now, as far as her physique goes, again, awesome physique. It, it is it and everyone thought when Angelica won it really pushed the amount of muscle again but if you compare Angelica to Ashley it wasn't a huge jump in muscle uh, it was it was actually very similar in terms of the physiques um, different shape to the muscles but if you compare Angelica to Courtney and you just looked at them and said oh you know who's more muscular yeah you would think Angelica's more muscular but she's a she's not as petite as Courtney was and so it's not as big of a jump but she did have a lot bigger glutes. So that's the one area where she was a little bit more dense, more developed in the glutes. And so people thought, man, that's a huge jump. You know, and it, the same things kind of happened there. So this is where, um, again, when you look at the tie-ins on Angelica, you know, they got a little bit deeper on the tie-in with Angelica. When you look here, they're a little bit deeper, but they're still not full tie-ins. Okay, so this is past the point of signs of tie-ins where you look at with Ashley. When we look back at Ashley, we look at, Signs of tie-ins in 2014 is a real good example of it, where you see these tie-ins here on the lower glute, but you're not seeing the full tie-in. Okay, the full tie-in would basically be a full V just like that on the lower glute. Um, you could see that there's a little bit of detail still missing, a little bit of body fat still right there, or development still not there yet, which di which changes things dramatically. So, though it looks like it's not that much to go from here to full tie-ins is somewhere in the neighborhood of a probably a pound to two pounds of muscle on the glutes and also an additional probably four to six weeks of hard dieting to get that last little bit of body fat. It seems like it's not a big deal. It is a huge deal. It is, it is huge to go from that tie-in to get to full crispy 100% tie-ins and that's where things change from you being a, from it being just a fitness model contest girl who just woke up and went to the beach that day to a full-on bodybuilder getting ready for a show having to take different things that they weren't necessarily needed to take before to get that lean and that you know turns a lot of people off and some people are seeing that these days and i've been one that's been kind of talking about it and i do think that the sport is a little bit due for a reset now looking at angelica again 2017 and then looking at her in 2018 you know when you see angelica and this is at first going to sound like an insult, but it is absolutely a compliment. Okay, when you see some of these stars these days, you see them and you're like, man, that girl has really good glutes. I would love to have glutes like her. Or you see her and you're like, oh, man, she's got a tiny waist. I would love to have a tiny waist like that, right? When you see Angelica, you don't see any of that. You don't see anything on her where you say, oh, wow, I would like to, her glutes are so crazy. I would love to have glutes like that, right? You just see her and nothing stands out. Nothing is a standing out on her physique. And what I always like to say about Angelica is that she's good from everywhere, not great from anywhere. And that is the biggest compliment you can give someone in bikini because that is, means that her balance was spot on. Nothing stood out. And that's why people had a hard time understanding. Some people had a hard time understanding. Why is Angelica winning? I don't get it. There's not anything there that is like so impressive and so crazy. I'm like, the reason she's so good is that nothing on her is so impressive or so crazy. It's supposed to be about balance. Nothing sticks out. You can't pinpoint anything that sticks out. That's why she's so good, right? She hits the criteria. The balance is there. Nothing stands out. Nothing's too much. Nothing's too little. The tie-ins are there, but they're not crazy deep. The glutes have a tiny bit of body fat on them, right? That is what a fitness model is supposed to be. Do you see fitness models without any body fat on them? No, they all have, they all have a little bit of body fat on them. It's not shredded to the bone, right? And Angelica nailed the criteria year after year. She got two in a row, um, you know, the second most Olympia that there is, and did an amazing, amazing job. And so that's where I thought, you know, kind of, I kind of thought it, thought it peaked from 2000, really 2013, 14 to uh, all the way to, to 2018. And again, this is no knock at anyone who's winning. 
uh, I want to make sure it's very clear. This is no knock at anyone who's winning these shows. You know, if you're winning, keep doing what you're doing to win. I think that the, you know, when the judges tell you to do something, you absolutely got to do it. But what I'm saying is the judges have gotten a little bit away from what was winning in 2018 you know, all the way down to 2013, and it's changed so much. So, yeah, of course, girls who are winning might take a little bit of offense to it. I'm like saying, well, you're, maybe you're too muscular, maybe you're too much this. It's not about, it's not about you or, or that. It's about how, it's, how you have to look like that to win now versus how you didn't have to look like that before. And it's very simple. The girls who are winning now looking like that would just be a little bit less and still be winning right now. They still have amazing physiques. It's the structure that's winning it. So now when we go on, let's go ahead and move on. And then this is one of those, um, one of those years that changed things quite a bit. Okay, so Issa in 2019 wins. Now, again, everyone's like, well, she doesn't have the craziest glutes. I don't know why she would be throwing everything off so much. She doesn't have, she still has, again, signs of a tie-in, but no full deep tie-in, right? No squared glutes, no crazy development on her glutes. Um, but what, what changed? Well, her conditioning is paper thin. She's got a tiny, tiny waistline, right? I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteeing her waistline is somewhere in the teens, probably 19 inches, 18 inches. It's, it's tiny, tiny waistline, right? Great shoulder width, but then you start seeing muscle. She's opening up her lat a little bit, right? If you guys remember from 2019 to 2020, people were opening up their lat quite a bit, and then the judges said, no, you guys got to stop. So Tamer and Tarek were awesome on that. They were controlling the muscle, and they were saying, you know what? You guys got to stop opening up the lat. So they toned that down. You Now you see them in the full side pose not opening up the lat anymore, but the muscle started pushing just a little bit in 2019. The conditioning started advancing, getting a little bit crazier in 2019. And then um, the next year that came out, you have Janet, who looked absolutely awesome, looked incredible, and definitely no knock on Janet. She looked crazy incredible. This is back when the, the teacup posing was starting to happen in 2020. Um, the, the, this is exactly what they wanted. But look at the difference of muscle from 2020 and to 2018. Pretty significant difference in the shoulder fullness. So let's look at the shoulders here on Angelica, right? Look at the shoulder fullness on Angelica when she won here in 2018, just a couple years ago. And then let's look at the shoulder fullness on Issa, how much rounder they are. Remember the criteria of what we're talking about on roundness of the shoulders, and then look at the overall width and roundness to Janet, right? So that's one of the bigger things that changed there. Now, the other thing that changed is, um, obviously she, Janet is not sticking out her lats. She's not someone who's opening up her lats like Issa was. Um, now, look at the density of the muscle of the legs, right? We talked about it earlier. The density is something that we're not supposed to necessarily have. Look at the detail in the hamstrings. Remember we talked about no striations anywhere? Does that look like striations to you in the hamstrings, right? Are those, are those striations in the hamstrings? A little bit, right? It's a little bit more than when you look back at the previous Olympia champions. So let's look back even at Issa. Not much striations, a tiny bit of detail, a little bit more than Angelica in the hamstrings. But then when we look at Angelica, almost no detail in the hamstrings in terms of striations, especially in 2017. Look back at Courtney, absolutely no detail in the hamstrings in 2016. Look at Ashley, no detail in the hamstrings in terms of striations. So you could slowly see it starting to evolve and getting past to the point. And then when you get to the Janet stage in 2020, that's when full tie-ins came out. Okay, so full tie-ins, I was the first champion where full tie-ins was awarded. So we talk about full tie-ins, right? not just signs of tie-ins. So hopefully you guys can see the difference of, of how I pointed them out of full tie-ins and a sign of a tie-in, right? Just the start of the tie-in. So the full tie-in is this full roundness, this full edging of that lower glute where you can see everything on the bottom there. The conditioning levels, again, to get to that stage, to the prior stage, is dramatically different, okay? Because where do females generally hold body fat the most? On their legs and glutes. Of course, it's gonna be the hardest to get the legs and glutes the leanest, the core is going to get tighter for most women, way ahead of schedule, and that last bit of body fat on that lower glute is going to take a lot more effort. I mean, to get to that last, to get to this stage is, you know, it's for some for some women, it's eight eight plus weeks starting at that other stage. So big difference on the tie-in. It's funny when we talk about things that change the game. Okay, when when um, Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman started winning bodybuilding shows, especially when Ronnie Coleman did it and he came in with feathered glutes. That changed conditioning to a whole nother level 
the, the feathering of the glutes, it was like, man, now we got to get leaner to a whole nother level, right? Well, bikini at a lesser, of course, at a much lesser <laughs> capacity also had that, had that full tie-in stage and that you could see it pinpoint in, in 2020 where the first Olympia champion had the full crispy tie-in. Um, you also see uh, and uh, Issa the year before come in drier than anyone has came in before on the waistline and starting to see those little signs. Now, when you look at um, Jennifer, all right, the, the current Miss Olympia champion, I think that they did a really good job with picking Jennifer. I think that Jennifer hits the evolution. I think that she still fits the criteria very well. She's very muscular, right? But she's also not petite as Courtney King. So you can kind of compare her to the structure of an Angelica um, without being as petite as, you know, Courtney. So, of course, she's more muscular than, than Courtney. She's just naturally bigger boned than Courtney, right? So, of course, there's an evolution there. Her conditioning, if you look at her conditioning and you look at everyone on the Olympia stage, her conditioning is probably right in the middle, if not on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of the leanest person there. She's probably somewhere in the 30, probably the 30% of softest people in there in the Olympia show, right? So the one thing I was really happy about with um, Jennifer winning, one, Jennifer is an awesome champion and a good person, so I'm just happy she won, period. But two, it's a realistic expectation for people to reach. I think that if you're, you know, obviously she's genetically gifted, small waist, really big glutes, you know, gorgeous, wide shoulders, all that. But we're not seeing the crazy, crazy conditioning that is kind of separating people loving bikini and it evolving so much where they're having to take things that they shouldn't have to take in order to get that lean, right? So I'm happy with the current, the current champion. I think that, that if it stayed here, I think a lot of girls can get that. The problem is when you're looking at other pro shows, a lot of girls aren't winning that look like Jennifer. Really, Jennifer is the only girl that looks like Jennifer who's winning. I, I don't see anyone else with her conditioning levels in pro shows, winning shows. You might get one off here and there, but for the most part, everyone is a lot leaner than her. And that's where this kind of discussion started with girls winning that were not fitting the criteria and winning at a pretty high rate. So everyone's looking, okay, are we going to be doing a reset this year like they did with Ashley in 2013? Are we going to um, change the conditioning levels where it's more the entry level division, which would bikini was designed to be? Are we going to change the muscle levels again, right? So I think that there's a few key people who look great and have are still hitting that criteria really good. You look at Daraja, she's not too muscular. You look at Ashley, she's not too muscular. Um, you have people with those bubbly muscles who just, who aren't super dense, who look good. You have Shelby who recently won a show who's not too muscular. Um, so my, my personal opinion is if they can keep picking winners like this at the Olympia who are fitting the criteria and not pushing it so much and then matching it at other shows, matching it at other pro shows, we can start giving the right signals to girls. Hey, this is how you should show up for the Olympia. Because I can tell you what, the judges know about this. I've been contacted about it because I posted about it. I've been contacted about it. They, they're very aware of they want to keep the division somewhat available for everyone to do. I don't think anyone walking off the street should be able to do bikini. Let's not make it that easy, right? But the average gym goer who's been in the gym for a year wants to take it seriously and do a and, and prep for a show for 16 weeks after they've been working out for a year, absolutely. I think that person should be able to do an NPC show, be able to compete and push themselves to a level they haven't been to, and do so without having to take a whole bunch of stuff that, that a lot of these girls are having to take now because of how the conditioning levels are. So looking at, now let's go ahead and look at other winners, given that what the knowledge that we've been learning today about how they're picking things. And this is where I think there's going to be a big discrepancy between the Olympia winners and how they look and how these other pro show winners are winning. And I think a lot of these other pro show winners are going to be winning pro shows, looking a certain way, thinking they need to show up to the Olympia that way, and then get a real eye awakening that that's not how you're going to win the Olympia, especially this year, because there's a lot of talk about it because a lot of really muscular girls, really tight girls with crazy conditioning have been winning pro shows here and there. Now, a lot of times the judges, they say, well, we can only pick based on who shows up. I would disagree with that. Respectfully, I think that you could always pick the closest person to the criteria, and just because a lot of big, muscular, really lean girls showed up, you don't have to pick a big, muscular, really lean girl. If a girl fits the bikini criteria that's there, you know, I think that that is what you should go with 100% of the time, and that there shouldn't be this variance based on who shows up. I think the criteria is set. Pick the girl that looks close to the criteria. Send the right signs. Send the right message to everyone competing, 
in the bikini division. This is what's going to win. We're not getting away from this criteria. And it'll be great for everyone in the sport. You know, people are, a lot of girls think they're not muscular enough. They're not going to be able to get that muscular anymore because they're only looking at those pro shows, not looking at the Olympia winners. And I think that the message needs to be sent 100% across the board. So have they got it right? Have they got it wrong? I think they got it wrong at some of these pro shows. But I think at the Olympia, for the most part, have gotten it right, pushing it here and there. I don't know what's going to happen this year at the Olympia. If it's trending how it's, going to be, how it's been happening at these other pro shows, you're going to see someone with full tie-ins probably win again. right? So let's see what they do. They're definitely talking about it. They want to keep bikini accessible to all. It's not, smart. it's not a smart business move to make it so hard that no one can compete. You're just eliminating half your customer base. So that's definitely a concern as well. It is a business at the end of the day. So let's look at some other winners and where I think it's gone a little bit far with it. Now, uh, and I, I want to make sure that everyone knows that um, we're not picking on anyone. I'm not picking on anyone. I think that these girls have lovely physiques. One of the ones, unfortunately, who's kind of come into light has been Amy. And I think, first off, uh, amazing, beautiful girl, like awesome flow. And I think that if she got just a little bit smaller, she'd still be winning bikini pro shows. But, yes, the density – on the legs has gotten to the point where in the description of the in the description of bikini it does not it'll say not to have that type of density and not to have that type of fullness look at how muscular and how big the glutes are you know are the glutes squaring off like per the per the criteria are they that big where they're squaring off and it's up for you guys to decide is there separation in the hamstrings up for you guys to decide i would say they are so beautiful physique i don't want to take anything away from her amazing physique but as far as the criteria goes, as far as prior Olympia winners go, does she fit the old standard or does she fit what the direction of where bikini is going? Is the bikini direction going this way? Now, what I would say if I was her, I would say keep competing and win as many shows as you can because you could probably change the criteria. If you're winning looking like that, that does change the criteria. And what happens is you get these scenarios where judges, for example, her first show with um, this season at the Patriots, I think it was the Patriots, she got 16th place. The judges thought she was a little bit muscular, a little bit too big for the division. Went, did the, uh, the Tampa Pro, won the Tampa Pro. She came back with that momentum and then got a perfect score in front of the same judge who had her as 16th place just a few weeks prior, right? People are going to say, well, her conditioning is different, this and that. It's not a big difference. To go, it, to go from 16th to first is a huge difference in conditioning we need to be. It's a slight difference in conditioning between those two pictures. So you could see how the momentum carries it and how one judge can have his opinion win a big show, and then, then that becomes a new standard. And that's how fast it changes in bikini. And people aren't prepared for that. We're talking months here, right? Two, three months before you go from 16th to first place, and now all of a sudden that's the criteria, right? So in some scenarios, yes, I do think it gets away from where it should be. But then you have winners like Daraja, right? And it throws things up. I think that she looks great. She's not overly muscular. Now, her shape is crazy. You know, I've talked about her shape for years. Crazy is shape. Um, you know, crazy small waist, wide shoulders, but her conditioning, you know what's funny is when I first saw it, I fell into this trap too. And I was like, you know, her legs still, they're, they're a little bit small, right? They're a little bit smaller for bikini. And then, and I said that out loud. And then I said, you know what? They're not small for bikini. They're small for new bikini because I've been looking at all these girls winning with huge quads. <laughs> so based on the criteria, her legs are exactly where they need to be. So I even, it even fools me, you know, as I start seeing these girls win and win and win and every judge keeps telling me after pro shows, she needs to get bigger, she needs to get bigger, she needs to get bigger. Then I look at this girl, and I'm like, oh, she's small. But in reality, she's jacked, right? She's jacked for a bikini. She's probably, based on the criteria, maxing it out. Based on the criteria of her conditioning, maxing it out. Um, looking at her tie-ins, I mean, they're almost fully in. I mean, they're on. you could look at both sides of the tie-in. This side, you'd say, oh, it needs a little bit more based on today's like full tie-in standard that they're going with. And, and then um, this one here, is, it's, it's a little bit more tight in. Actually, a little bit more on the left and the right. So the the this is I, I think is a realistic obtainable physique i don't think it's so far so i'm not saying hey pull everything back way back to you know just some girl walking on the beach who works out three times a week i'm saying obtainable physique without taking an unnecessary amount of things to get you to that level of conditioning i think that's a fair reasonable um request for the like, bikini standard being close to the standard even this is past the standard though the, I mean, remember the standard is the roundness to the shoulders, just a little bit of roundness and no striations. Um, it's a, that's a lot of roundness to the shoulders there. But I think that's realistic and obtainable. Now, another recent winner, um, Miss USA. We had our we had a champion win uh, their class at USA to get their pro card, and she was second in the overall. And the reason that she got second in the overall is because she didn't have the fullness up top as uh, Savannah had. Now, 
that is a lot of fullness up top. You know, with, with the girl that we had backstage, we were like, well, she's pushing it a little bit. We're not going to really pump her shoulders up that much because she's so muscular already. And then after she got off stage, we were told she should be more muscular than the shoulders. When she got to the pro level and actually competed, she was a lot smaller than the pro. So the muscle has jumped quite a bit. And that girl's name was Asia. Um, she was second at Miss USA. And uh, I, thought, I thought she had the chance based on her – based on the criteria of what would win prior Miss USA's, right? I thought that she would have that, that criteria not be overly muscular. I thought that Savannah was just a hair muscular on the shoulders and the arms. But again, they went with the more muscular girl. So you can see even in the – so you can see in the development here, you're seeing the shoulders. But would you call that on her shoulder a striation? Would you call that striated shoulders from the back? I would. Would you call this a full tie-in and squared – starting to square glutes, right? I would say it's pushing it, right? Is the arms really muscular? Does it look like the average fitness model's arms? I think it's pushing it a little bit, right? So in some scenarios, I think that they're picking place people all over the place versus sticking to the criteria. And I think that's where the discrepancy comes in. When someone sees someone like this win, they're like, man, I'll never look like that. I'm gonna have to take so much stuff to look like that that I don't even want to do it, right, type of thing. So you have these one-offs. And I think that it just needs to be toned down just a tiny bit and then I think that at these pro shows, when there's a lot of girls showing up who are muscular, just don't pick those girls. Pick the girls that fit the criteria best. Don't change your judging opinion because a lot of girls showed up. It shouldn't be a learning curve type of scenario, like when you're getting a grading curve in a class where the, the smart guys throw everything off, right? It, it shouldn't be like that you show up and all these muscular girls are like, oh, well, the curve's off today. There's a criteria set. So I don't think that's a valid excuse or valid reason for it. This, the criteria is set. It's written out what it should look like, and I think that that should be picked every single show and then we won't get so far away from the division where it keeps growing and growing and growing and it has to be pulled back every time if we just pick the winners that are based on the criteria no matter who shows up no matter what big name shows up no matter what momentum they have the the person who fits the criteria the closest wins every single time and then that solves the problem right there so i don't think it's gone too far away but i do want to say something about it before it does go way too far away and i've seen this year especially it starting to really accelerate with the speeds so I don't want the division to get crazy and get out of, out of control like it has in men's physique. And in men's physique, it's a different argument. I think it's absolutely gotten out of control. But here's an example for you from today. So today was the North American Championships. 2011, the picture on the left is the North American overall champion. Picture on the right is the 2022 North American tall class champion. And this guy is, he, first off, amazing physique. I would love to look like this guy. <laughs> crazy, crazy good physique. But is that a male fitness model or is that a bodybuilder in board shorts, right? I think the guy on the left would fit the criteria of a male fitness model a lot better than the guy on the right. But obviously the guy on the right, amazing, beautiful, aesthetic physique, looks like a bronze Greek god, right? That's not the male fitness model division, right? He looks definitely classic physique, looks, looks even bodybuilding, to be honest. I mean, but that's what's winning men's physique these days and it's unfortunate because a lot of guys don't have a place to compete that want to do men's physique who used to have a place to compete because the guy on the left i think a lot of people in the gym can get on stage and look like that and and not in a too long of a time i think that's a two-year physique maybe three-year physique if your genetics aren't great get on stage have some fun push yourself but the guy on the right i don't think no matter how many years you put in the gym especially how many years you put in the gym naturally you're going to look like that it's just the reality of things you know Another example is in figure. This is definitely happening in all the divisions, but definitely happening in figure. Men's physique is probably the most where it was happening. But in figure, here's an example of Aaron Stern winning Ms. Figure Olympia in 2010. Aaron Stern might look familiar to you because she now competes in bikini. That's right. The division has gotten so muscular that even the champion of 2010 switched divisions down to bikini and has been quite competitive. But not only has she been quite competitive, she's actually leaner now than she was when she won the figure Miss Olympia just 12 years ago. So kind of crazy to show you about the evolution of how things are going. So I just don't want bikini to ever get to that stage. And so we're now I'm seeing the signs of it and I want to make a video about it so you guys can make your own judgment on it, think what you think. And, uh, and, and make sure that you also post your interests, you know, post what you think. Maybe you think it should go more muscular, right? Maybe there should be another bikini division where they call it bikini beach or bikini. Uh, they have like in the UK, they have bikini trained and bikini. I think they call it bikini beach or bikini model. One of the two. So maybe they should create some separation for those, right? So anyway, those are my take on things. I'm a, 
I am here for the athlete. I am the actual fan of the sport, even without being here for the athlete. I just love the sport. And I hate seeing girls who used to be so excited about doing bikini who just can't compete anymore and are going to different organizations that aren't as glamorous, that don't have the prestige of the IFBB NPC, but they're doing because this just gives them the place to compete. And I would love for them to have a place to compete on the big stages like NPC again. And I don't want it to get too far away from them. And so that's why I'm making these videos, and that's why I'm being a little bit of a uh, post about it here and there. But it's for you guys, for the athlete. Hopefully you like it. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.